This month, a new Robin Hood movie comes out starring Taron Egerton as the latest in a long line of heroes to play the title character. So what is it about Robin Hood that has so much staying power? The character is one of the most represented figures in movie history, portrayed by a range of actors including Douglas Fairbanks, Errol Flynn, Kevin Costner, Carrie Elways, Russell Crowe, and a cartoon fox upon many, many others. And an almost as impressive array of TV series, starting with a BBC show starring the second Doctor Patrick Troughton, many of them approaching the legend in creative ways such as featuring Robin's daughter or even a time-traveling future descendant. The character has met or been portrayed by Tom and Jerry, Daffy Duck, Yogi Bear, Loopy de Loop, and Vanity Smurf, and is alluded to by literally hundreds of other shows, cartoons, and films. So, it should come as no surprise that he shows up frequently in comics, especially in the Golden Age. But first, let's talk about the legend of Robin Hood. The first Robin Hood stories appeared in English poems and ballads dating back as far as 1370. The character was established as a skilled archer and swordsman from the beginning and pitted against the Sheriff of Nottingham as a champion of the lower class. Other elements built over time, such as his support of King Richard and his rebellion against the corrupt Prince John who took over Richard's rule when the true king went to fight in the Crusades. His general defense of the downtrodden gave way to the classic robbing from the rich to give to the poor. He was joined by a band of merry men, notably his best friend, the massive Little John, daring Will Scarlet, balladeer Alan Adale, the jovial Friar Tuck, and of course Maid Marian, a lady of nobility who was the object of Robin's affections. Maid Marian was actually an older character popular in medieval May Day festivals, which also included Robin Hood games and plays, so the meeting of the two was possibly inevitable and they are inexorably linked today. Over time, Robin has been a popular subject of stories and revisions, popping up in Walter Scott's 19th century novel Ivanhoe, T.H. White's take on the King Arthur legend, The Once and Future King, operas, ballets, and more, although our modern ideas of the character are largely codified in the 1883 children's novel The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Pyle. In merry England, in times of old, when good King Henry II ruled the land, there lived within the green glades of Sherwood Forest near Nottingham Town a famous outlaw whose name was Robin Hood. No archer ever lived that could speed a grey goose shaft with such skill and cunning as his, nor were there ever such yeomen as the seven score merry men that roamed with him through the greenwood shades. Right merrily they dwelled within the depths of Sherwood Forest, suffering neither care nor want, but passing the time in merry games of archery or bouts of cudgel play. Living upon the king's venison, washed down with droughts of ale of October brew. A last significant addition to the Robin Hood lore was added as late as the 1980s in the BBC's Robin of Sherwood television series, which added a Muslim character, Nasir. In 1991's movie Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, the character Azim solidified the idea of a Saracen member of the band, an idea that has been employed in most adaptations since, although names and characterizations vary. In comics, Robin Hood enjoyed runs in comics by several publishers, starting with DC's New Adventure Comics number 23. Charlton Comics published Robin Hood and His Merry Men, IW Publishing and Magazine Enterprises both produced comics simply titled Robin Hood, while Quality Comics published Robin Hood Tales. And we shouldn't forget Elliott Publishing's Classics Illustrated either, which loosely adapted Pyle's version of the stories. Beyond this, the character would show up in cameos all over the place. He has been a supporting character in stories such as The Golden Archer, a young hero who served as Robin's apprentice, Kid Eternity, whose power is to summon characters of history and legend, has made use of Robin, and the character is a notable inspiration to many archery or swashbuckling-themed characters. Hey, Lefty, did you read what it says behind us? Nah, I can't read. You'll have plenty of time to learn how in jail. Now, Mr. Rodent, where do I find that money you hid? I'm in business, so talk fast. I'm master of this ship, Captain Robin. There'll be no needless bloodshed here. More notably, he's been invoked as inspiration for characters whose influence isn't as obvious. MLJ's The Green Falcon was represented as a sword-wielding knight, but the rest of his story, including his rivalry with Prince John, was a direct adaptation of Robin Hood legend. Meanwhile, for much of the Golden Age, the name Robin Hood was simply synonymous with exciting adventure. Batman's sidekick Robin was named after the legendary hero. Lady Luck was sometimes called a modern Lady Robin Hood. 
Lev Gleason's Nitro is the streamlined Robin Hood, and Quality Comics super speed character Quicksilver was nicknamed the Laughing Robin Hood despite being neither outlaw nor archer. And if you're more familiar with the character from his DC Comics modern day interpretation, Max Mercury, it's not really clear where the laughing part of his nickname came from either. Hmm, I don't think so. Although Robin Hood appears with less frequency in modern comics, he still pops up from time to time in comics such as Fables, and pop culture still embraces him. Few characters have been portrayed as many times in so many mediums in so many varied ways. So, from Charming Rogue to Grim Vigilante, from Ancient Poem to Upcoming Movie, from Prince of Thieves to Men in Tights, few characters have had so much influence over so many centuries, and that is Robin Hood's Golden Age influence. <laughs> idea of having more of everything. Stop working the people so hard. Then you won't have to make them laugh, and you'll be happier yourself. <laughs>